us right now is Dr. Jose Leal, who serves as the Bailey Matthews National Cell Museum Science Director and Curator to explain what shells can be collected and which ones you can leave behind. So, going to ask which ones are the best to be collected and which ones uh, should we just say, let Mother Nature do its thing? Yeah, good morning. Well, um, I have a you know, a little sample here, things you can find on the beach. Uh, we're here at the beautiful Island Inn, which is one, one of the, you know, great places on Sunnibel for, for shelling. Um, this is, here is a Sun Ray Venus, you know, one of the spectacular bivalves, um, species that has uh, two parts to its shell, um, a lace murex. Spectacular shell with the freely projections here, really cool. A uh, Florida fighting cock. Um, very variable species, you can find them in orange and brown, and this one has a beautiful lavender um, color here. A, uh, what else can we show you? Uh, a lettered olive, which is a shell that's very, very glossy, and uh, you can find them gliding on the sand, but when you see a live shell, do not take it. The, the regulations here in Lee County and Sanibel Island um, stipulate that no one may take a live shell away from the beach. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you may, you may see the animal and sometimes you, can't, you may not see. But if, you, if the shell is heavy and you suspect that might, there might be an animal inside, just leave it behind. Now, um, Dr. Leo, why, and, does, why does Sanibel Island have so many perfectly intact seashells? That's a great question. Sunnibel Island has a uh, very unusual orientation. The island is kind of uh, is oriented from east to west instead of north-south, and I think that helps trap shells um, as the storms come in, um, especially during the winter, and sometimes in the summer, too. Um, there's one thing I forgot to show, and I want to make sure you all understand what that is. That's uh, the famous Junonia. That's what most of the more... Uh, enthusiastic and more experienced shellers are trying to find here on Sanibel and Captiva and the neighboring islands. So keep that in mind, the beautiful pattern, keep your eyes peeled for that species. If you find one, make sure you contact the local newspapers to have your picture taken with it. <laughs> <laughs> so how are these seashells formed? Well, the seashells are parts of animals called mollusks and uh, I, I like to say that a shell is forever, so a mollusk doesn't shed its shell and get another one. They make the shell, you know, from the very beginning. So from the moment they are small little babies, uh, they already have a shell. And that, as the animal grows, it makes the shell larger and larger. So the animal can always be protected by that, uh, by that structure. Now, Sanibel Island, the, the shell capital of the world, tell us about the Sanibel Stoop that I've heard about. Well, the Sanibel Stoop is, you know, it comes with the turf, if, if I may. Um, if you want to pick up a shell, you have to bend, and, and there is the Sanibel Stoop. Um, we also like to say that there is the Captiva Crouch, which is the Captiva equivalent to the Sanibel Stoop. Very cool. Uh, definitely, I love to collect seashells along along the beaches. Sea glass is another one. Do you happen to see sea glass in Sanibel Island ever? Yes, we do. We find pieces of you know very very uh, worn sea glass, and you know the older it is, the better mm -hmm. it looks. And we have a group of people here that, that uh, dedicate themselves to to making jewelry and crafts using shells, sea glass, and all kinds of cool stuff that you can find on our beautiful beaches here. Wow. Well, Dr. Jose Leal, thank you so much for joining us, showing us the beautiful seashells yeah. you can collect in Sanibel Island. Thank you.